test, test, test. No, no audio. Yeah, just wait. Do you hear my voice? Yes, you can hear me. Okay, so, uh, all right. We're going to uh, go ahead and start. So it's all working, yay, excellent. Uh, who's starting? Mr. Moon. Uh, when you come up, for those that are contributing, there are some cables, so just come around. Thanks. Good day, afternoon. Uh, thank you all for showing up in person and online. Uh, it's great uh, to be with you all today. Uh, those of us who met this morning on our uh, various board meetings, uh, it's been a great day so far. Uh, as we join together for the AGM for both of our respective schools, uh, let's begin by opening in prayer. By the way, I'm Paul Moore. I'm the chair of the Bible College, in case uh, you don't know. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for all you've given us and all you've blessed us with. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the time that we can be together. Thank you for the time that we can dedicate to how best to participate in these two institutions that uh, try to further your mission on this planet. Uh, help us to uh, be wise in how we move forward. Help us to be mindful of your vision and your mission. Uh, and help us to be faithful to that vision and mission. In Jesus' name. Hi, I'm Bob Ammerman. I'm on the uh, high school board. I'm the treasurer there. I'm going to read a scripture. There's every year the, uh, the high school has a thematic scripture, and this is this year's scripture. It's from John 16, starting in verse 25. I've spoken of these matters in figures of speech, but soon I will stop speaking figuratively, and I will tell you plainly all about the Father. Then you will ask in my name, I'm not saying I'll ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you dearly because you love me and believe that I came from God. Yes, I came from the Father into the world, and now I will leave the world and return to the Father. Then his disciples said, At last you're speaking plainly and not figuratively. Now we understand that you know everything and there's no need to question you. From this, we believe that you came from God. Then Jesus asked, Do you finally believe? But the time is coming. Indeed, it is here now when you will be scattered, each one going his own way, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. Hello, I'm uh, Emmanuel Velasco. I am the president of Great Lakes Bible College. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is uh, take a motion to accept the meeting minutes from our last AGM. Uh, if you are in your email, you can see the direct vote, uh, which is uh, what the one of the attachments is for the meeting minutes. And uh, I will take that. May I have somebody motion to accept the meeting minutes? Paul Moore and a seconder. Murray Hibbard. And uh, all in favor of accepting by show of hands that is accepted thank you oh sorry and those online uh, you will now have the opportunity to uh, vote through the uh, the link that's available
believe that that's okay. All right. So uh, we're going to close the voting, uh, but that has passed between the votes online as well as those here in person. So our next agenda item <laughs> is uh, to uh, do an ac some acclamations for our new board members. Uh, this year, do you want to do it? We're going to have Paul Moore, <laughs> our uh, board chair, come up and uh, share a little bit. And he's taller than I am, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, Jim, if you're on the call, I'm sorry. Uh, what's your GMR? Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so we have two, uh, two board members, new board members to the Bible College uh, board this year, uh, Jim Holston and uh, Bernie Hartung. Uh, Bernie is in person with us uh, today, and Jim is down in Houston. Uh, Bernie is an elder at the Owenstown Church of Christ uh, with a background in uh, business HR, finance HR, no, 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 no. Medical lab technology, okay. And, and Jim, uh, most of us will be familiar with, uh, was with the Bible College as a teacher uh, background in ministry and teaching and is now in um, Houston, Texas. Uh, as we do not, ha as uh, these are acclamations, so we would like to introduce both of these gentlemen uh, to the corporation membership uh, and uh, thankful for their willingness to serve on the board. Thank you. So this year we're going to uh, I'm going to present a little bit about the Bible College at large, and then embedded within that, we'll also have an opportunity to review the financials. And uh, at the end of that portion, we will take some motions, and then we will get into the financials for 2023, uh, up this upcoming year. So, for those of you who we're at the last AGM, you'll remember uh, that it was announced that I was going to take on the role of president of Great Lakes Bible College, and I officially took that capacity on January 1st, 2022, and so I am now nine months into this role, and it has been a wonderful learning opportunity. I've had a great chance to meet with uh, our constituents, our students, our faculty, and uh, really get to understand in a deeper way what the GLBC can be and is to these people. What has struck me is that we really are a community. Uh, we're not just a place where you get knowledge, but we are a community where you won't just get to know, but also be known. We have opportunities through things like our online chapel, through our live courses, so in person as well as online, where you're able to not just hear, but ask questions, respond. This is what this means to me. And that's not something that you're gonna get through uh, watching YouTube videos or reading a book. I've also had a wonderful chance to visit with a number of different congregations. Uh, I've been to Owen Sound and Meaford, uh, Stony Creek, uh, and I've got a number of other places that I'm planning to visit. So. Uh, if you're familiar with any of these congregations or have an opportunity, I would love to see you all there. I'm also taking additional invitations. So if I haven't been or I'm not planning, <laughs> please uh, get in touch with me. Bible, ministry, and worldview learning. This really is the paradigm that we've been working on for the last few years. How do we approach our curriculum? How do we approach our learning? Bible is our foundation, everyone should be involved in ministry, and our unique Christian worldview is important in how we approach those two things. So as we take a look at what we're doing with the Bible ministry worldview approach, our goal is to have a program that appeals to new and returning students. Um, so there's lots of different ways in which to engage with that. 
One of them is our Anytime Audit Archive. So if you go to gldc.ca slash Anytime Audit Archive, then you'll be able to see about 25 different courses that you can start auditing at any time. You can also finish it at any time. And you'll be able to do that not just through your laptop, but even on your phone, we've got an app through uh, our platform called Populi. And you can listen to lectures whenever you want. So if you're really just looking for like a, a one-way, do it at your own pace thing, then we have that option. But we also have those in-person options, those live options. So we've got our hybrid courses, which have been popular. These are eight weeks instead of 12 weeks. They usually meet in the evenings. And those have been very popular, <coughs> both for uh, individuals as well as congregations who are auditing those together. Based on our feedback, as I've been going and meeting different congregations and uh, constituents, uh, we really want to focus on topics and formats that will help to help those uh, constituents to engage with the school. And so we're exploring those. One of the ways that we're doing that is through our library. So I've got a couple of screenshots. You can see that uh, in this top one, we've got a screenshot of our Populi library. And if you go to the to our Populi library, you can now search for any book that is in our Waterloo library. And so, you know, wherever you are, whether you're in Ontario, Alberta, New Brunswick, anywhere in between, you have that opportunity to uh, take a look, see what we have available. And in the future, we're gonna take a look at opportunities that we have to get that information to you. We have it in our library, how do we connect it to you? We're also taking a look at things like the Open Access Digital Theological Library. This is a way for students, these are all actually all online, so it's just clicking through links, and our students have access to material that can help them in furthering their education. As we take a look at our uh, 21 and 2021-2022 uh, year, um, first, I actually want to start at the bottom. I want to say thank you. Uh, we had a budgeted deficit, but we actually saved for a market value adjustment. Uh, we're pretty close to balanced. So I wanted to say thank you to you, our supporters, as well as to God for being faithful in allowing us to continue to serve. Some of the reasons why uh, our small deficits or surpluses, and I think that speaks to God's faithfulness. God has been faithful in allowing us to continue to serve and using his people, his kingdom, to allow us to do that as well. So we thank you and we thank our Father in Heaven. When we take a look at our is in our endowment, which means it's getting invested, and we also have about 7% in our student aid fund. Where we're spending our money, most of it is on the program, and then the next highest is administration. And where does it come from? 80% comes from donations. Uh, about that 80% of, of it coming from donation, that lines up right in line with most uh, post-secondary institutions where it's actually donations that are, are coming and not from tuition. So also in, in the document, in the GLBC document, And um, we had that reviewed. And uh, so what, what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a motion to accept the financial statements that were provided. 
Oh. Just the, motion online. the motion online will say Bible College. I apologize. Um, so the move that the Great Lakes Bible College 2021-2022 financial report be approved as presented. We had a first, uh, which who was Paul Moore, and do we have a second? Bernie will be our second. And uh, we'll do a vote here in the room. In favor? Okay. And online as well, we'll give them another minute to uh, vote on this primary motion. By the way, if you wanted to read the report, uh, it says Independent Practitioners Review Engagement Report. So that's our report card uh, from the accounting firm that we work with, and they're saying that we did a good job. All right, so that has been accepted. Our next motion is to uh, move that Marcer's Southcott Davoli Professional Corporation and Chartered Professional Accountants be appointed as the Professional Accountants for Great Lakes Bible College for 2022 and 2023. So that means next year, we'll be using the same corporation to execute the same services as they did last year. That was initially moved by Roy Williams uh, one of our, our treasurer for the Bible College Board. Do we have a seconder? Glenn? Glenn will be the seconder. And do we have a uh, vote all in favor here in the building? Thank you. And online, we'll give them a minute. So following this, we're uh, gonna go into the 2023 budget and we're gonna talk a little bit about that and then some of the other things that we've got going on. So looking forward to 2023, um, we're not going to show the whole budget, but we're just going to make a few highlights. Uh, we are planning a $78,000 planned bu budget deficit. So as with previous years, we're not going to account for um, any large donations that came through bequests or uh, kind of unexpectedly. So we are, based on that, going to be planning a, a planned deficit. We're also keeping in mind that salary costs are higher. So again, full-time president and two full-time professors means that salary costs are higher and that there won't be any government assistance, which we have had for two previous years. And so with that ceasing, uh, we are moving forward with that uh, deficit, which doesn't mean it has to end that way, as we've seen. As we think about finance and fundraising, our two main goals, number one, meet operational costs, and number two, invest for the future. We know that uh, because, of, because several of our uh, donations over the past few years have come through uh, estates and uh, planned bequests, that that's not something that you can count on. And so we are also investing in our future. So, uh, to part of the platform that the finance committee has had has been to 
bolster our investment portfolio and to stabilize that. Uh, thank you is another message that I want to bring. Uh, I can't say this enough. Thank you. Uh, the fundraising was strong, and if it wasn't for our investment performance, which was in line with the rest of the market, <laughs> if it wasn't for that, we actually would have ended up with a, a balanced uh, number. As we think about supporting those two goals, we also have our funds, which now line up with those targets. So we've t got our general fund. We also have our sponsorship fund, which we'll talk about long-term legacy or investment fund, and Bible teacher fund. Uh, this year, in addition to those other reasons we talked about, uh, we also invested a bit of money into PPE and other uh, quality air quality uh, items for our on-campus students and faculty. So if I could kind of sum up, what are we spending our money on? Scholarships. Bible teacher salaries, online library resources, and investments. Um, in June, we were at about $200,000 invested. And Lord willing, I'd, be, I'd like to come and stand here in a, a couple years and say that we're at 400000 So that's kind of where we're going with our, our strategy from a finance perspective. Uh, before I take questions, I just want to talk about our GLBC sponsorship fund. This is something new that has been created. And the idea with our sponsorship fund really has to do both with our donors and with our students. So when we think about students, people who want to take courses through GLBC, there is a, a growing uh, discrepancy with people's desire to take courses and their financial ability to take courses. So what we've done, and, and this idea actually came from one of our uh, donors who audited a, a class with uh, GLBC. They took counseling practices. They said, I want to sponsor somebody else to take this class. There's probably somebody there out there who wants to take this class, who needs to take this class, but doesn't have the money. And I said, well, let's do that. <laughs> let's figure out a way to make this happen. And so that's where this idea for the sponsorship fund came, came from. And so any donations to the sponsorship fund will allow students to take courses when funds are a, bar a barrier. Donations are internally restricted so that means as much as possible, we'll only use the interest to pay for students' uh, tuition. Uh, however, um, we re recognize that based on the needs, we may need to use uh, the principal monies. Award decisions are provided by the GLBC board. So what that means is the board has oversight in who and how those, those uh, awards are provided. And then at the bottom, it says award amounts vary. So that may include tuition, books, and living expenses. So depending on the need of the student, depending on the availability of funds, the board is able to provide direction so that different people can take courses in the way that best suits them. So whether that's online, whether that's in person, whether that's hybrid, or, not, or uh, live, those options can continue to be available through the GLBC sponsorship fund. So since that's new, I wanted to highlight it. And um, with that, I will ask if there's any questions. Uh, this is also an opportunity for those online. If you have any questions, you can type them into the chat and I'll ask Brad to read them out to me. In person, is there any questions? Good question. The courses we've got coming up this year, if you open up your GLBC report and uh, open it up to page five, you will see the courses that are available this term. So we have Hebrews, Intro to Hebrew, Intro to Ministry, and Ministry Formation. 
And then we also have three eight-week courses, Nahum to Malachi, Spiritual Formation, and Biblical Theology. If you want to see more, more uh, for what's coming up next term, or if you want to see the Anytime Audit Archive, I encourage everyone to go to www.gldc.ca and to click on, I think it's academics at the top. Oh, courses. Any other questions? Just an encouragement for anyone who's listening online, we do have snacks in the room. So maybe next year you can consider making the drive down to Beamsville. <laughs> Any questions online, Brad? Uh, I'm wondering if um, Sam has planned to bring two courses to the Bible study. Okay. Uh, the spring 2023 courses I actually don't have on hand. So. Judy. Um, so January to April 2023, we've got Chronicles to Esther, Luke, Introduction to Hebrew 2, Old Testament World, Exegesis and Hermeneutics, which is are some pretty fancy words, <laughs> Ministry Formation, Understanding systemis, Systemic Theology, and Biblical Apologetics. So Again, you can hear that all of our courses, the way we approach our course descriptions are really centered around Bible, ministry, or worldview. And uh, you know, it, it, I, I gotta say that uh, one thing that I've learned in the, in the past nine months in talking to our faculty is that they really do believe that we're not just an academic institution, but in fact, we are a ministry and service to the church to help and empower our, our students and our community in how to become ministers in their own circles. So that's, uh, that's just a, a quick little piece about us. All right. If there's no more questions, then I'm going to hand things over to Don, uh, to Jim, who is going to talk about Great Lakes Christian High School. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Jim Whitfield. I'm with the uh, administration of Great Lakes Christian High School. Actually, we'll refer to it as Christian College because it includes the preschool also. Uh, that's okay. So I'd like to just go over at a high level the financial uh, results of the high school and the preschool. So Great Lakes Christian College uh, for the last fiscal year. So the first thing to identify is that we have moved uh, our engagement uh, with our, the type of financial review that we have. We've moved from a review engagement to a full audit, which we used to do, um, but we were required to do that because of the size of loan we had with respect to the 2020 renovation that the bank uh, required us to have a full audit so we uh, have done that now. And if you have the financial report or the financial statements, you'll see the uh, three page auditor's report, which is standard. It's a, it's a clean report, which I'm happy to say. Uh, and I just, just will show you that it's there because that's kind of the, as Emmanuel said, the report card. 
uh, for the financial statements, and uh, they they accepted that the financial sta financial statements are materially correct and can be relied on and be relied on by the corporation uh, corporation members as to how the school is doing, and certainly the banks can rely on it uh, as they manage uh, to fund the school's operations. This year we've moved to a one-page summary statement of our financials for uh, presentation to the corporation. This was a suggestion of the outgoing auditor, uh, Delight DeVoli. She saw this presentation from a similar type of uh, nonprofit organization and she recommended it to us. Uh, I looked at it and I thought it communicated better uh, than the uh, fund accounting statements that you've seen in the past. So we'll, we'll give it a try this year and uh, if it works, then we'll go forward with that in future years. So what we're looking at is mainly for this year, all four funds collapsed into one. So the general fund, the capital asset fund, and then the two investment funds are collapsed into the one fund or one row. So it's a consolidated amount. You always had the consolidated amount in the financial statements, um, but instead of showing all the different rows and funds, to reduce confusion and speak to you a little bit better, I thought this was a clearer presentation and it kind of tells a story when you can see five years of history side by side. Uh, it's easier, as, as Emmanuel pointed out with the Bible College, it put things in perspective a little bit better when you're looking at this year's results. So I'm just going to go through a couple key lines uh, of this document. Um, I actually call this uh, the key performance measurements of the school. So you don't have every line of the financial statements listed here. Uh, certainly uh, you don't have every line of the income statement and expenses. Uh, they've, they've been summarized, um, but it's all in there at summary format. And the balance sheet uh, is in there at just total assets and total liabilities. So it's a really high level look. And if you want to go deeper, uh, the actual financial statements, full financial statements, are available to any corporation member uh, upon request. So just uh, let us know by email and we will email you the financial statements. And if you're here on site, we have the hard copies here also. Okay, the first thing I want to identify is the revenues for the high school program. And we're at a million eight hundred and seventy this year, uh, uh, compared to last year as one million eight hundred and sixty. So very similar to last year. This is the first full year of operation without restrictions, which means um, we have a full program coming online uh, last year. Uh, whereas uh, there's, we've had. Um, less students in previous years, more, more expenses relating to the uh, pandemic. But this was kind of our first full year without a whole lot holding us back. So it's more representative of what we've seen. But when you compare revenues, if you look back to years uh, 2020, 2019, 2018, revenue is a lot higher. Well, uh, the new reality after the pandemic uh, is that uh, our Asian students are not uh, applying to the school as much anymore. Uh, that market has dried up and that has been a major source of revenue for the school uh, going back to the 60s. We've been blessed because the Nigerian market has grown uh, over the last 10 years. And so we have lots of international students, but they're different in international students uh, and there's different price points for different regions for what they can bear. Uh, the most lucrative market or that adds the most financial contribution to the school was our Asian market and we hope that the loss of that market is temporary but it is a significant challenge for the school and if I was going to ask you to pray for one thing and there's several things that Don will identify we should pray for but on a financial perspective uh, pray that in the next year or next year that that Asian market grows and comes back, that parents will start to send their students from uh, Asia over to Great Lakes. There's a lot of fear uh, with the pandemic, and we think that fear is what's 
holding them back. There's no legal reason politically for students not to come. It's just fear of what could happen to their, their children when they're across the world. Preschool program is growing uh, as um, grants, more grants have come into play because the government wants to see preschools thrive. Um, so we have a full preschool program, lots of little, little ones in there. Uh, but then also we've been receiving grants and uh, we are embarking on a new project with the government uh, where we're actually partnering and the government will subsidize families uh, to uh, attend preschools. Uh, the government wants to limit the cost of preschool to $10 a day. Well, we can't offer it for $10 a day, so the government will increase our grants to cover uh, our costs beyond $10 a day. Uh, and we felt we needed to proceed with that because if we didn't, we could possibly lose all of our students in the preschool to other students or other preschools that are subsidized. So we're very carefully uh, moving forward with that initiative. And uh, we can opt out at any time that we uh, find that we're uncomfortable with how that relationship is going. Donations uh, are very strong, and Don can speak to that, but much of the donation levels in the last uh, three years uh, is complemented by the 2020 Reno project. Uh, we've had very strong support for the Reno project and that's why you see the revenues peaking in 2021, still high in 2022, but starting to taper off. Government assistance, we were very blessed with the Canadian uh, Emergency Wage Subsidy Program over the last three years and this year was the final piece of it that we received $73,000. And similar to the Bible College, other revenue, other revenue is usually a lot higher. Um, however, this year we took a, a, a hit on our investments, which are our scholarship funds, the uh, endowment fund, and the student aid fund. There was a market value adjustment of $90,000 on June 30th. And what that means is the Accounting standards require that you value or uh, put on your balance sheet your investments as they are valued at the market versus what you paid for it. So they went down uh, in market value as at June 30th. They've come back up to a certain degree, about 25% uh, since June 30th, and we pray that they will come back to the levels uh, that we were experiencing experiencing before that and we'll recover that loss that we've incurred this year but uh, we'll, that will take time and we are long-term investors with our investment policy that we're not looking to find a hot market but we want to invest in stable markets and those stable markets while they will will, will fluctuate over time in the long run uh, they have proven to be good investments and so we want to, even though we've had this hit at June 30th, and interesting enough, the Bible College uh, is with a different investor, but had the same experience. Uh, so uh, we want to be patient with that and uh, have that return over time. Expenses of the organization, the high school, uh, residential expenses, and the preschool are grouped together. And you can see over the last five years, they've... Uh, fluctuated a little bit. Some of that will be with the number of students involved. Oh, I'm sorry. I got away from my slides. Let's see if I can. Whoops. Sorry about that. I forgot to drive the PowerPoint. The expenses are very similar across the last five years, uh, and we've we heard Carrie talk in our, in our board meeting that uh, we are running as lean as we can to operate our academic program uh, that we really could use another two or three teachers to service the students we have. So um, that bears out the fact that we're even a little bit lower than we were in 2019 and 2020. Um, so that is just what it takes to operate uh, the school. Development and admissions. Oh. 
Okay, so I haven't identified anything noteworthy other than the development and admissions and administration and the facilities and other. They're fairly much in line with what we've incurred with other years, so uh, not too much that's noteworthy there. Total expenses for the school, 2.9 million, whereas uh, we can see total expenses for the last four years is very similar to that, except you'll have fluctuations for, in, uh, for inflation and you'll have fluctuations based on volume, the number of students we ha have. Of course, we have to staff up more when we have more students. Uh, we incur more expenses, so you'll see fluctuations uh, within that. So that's very similar though for year, from year to year. Excess revenue over expenses. So we have a negative of $124,000 uh, before amortization. And if you recall, that $90,000 uh, market value adjustment actually makes up most of that uh, deficit. Uh, so if, and that was out of our control. So you can see that before we start getting into the concept of amortization, we've balanced the organization on the income statement for the most part. And then we have amortization of $300,000. And that represents the allocation of the expense of your physical assets over their useful life. So um, if this HVAC is expected to last 40 years, 40 years, then we will expense the cost of it over a four year period. And I think the HVAC was about $300,000 for the whole school. So we don't expense it this year, but we allocate that expense over four years. We have to pay for it this year, but it gets accounted for over four years. And so you can see amortization over the last five years has varied a bit. 178, then 237, and then it, it increased as we added to the assets. Um, and then some assets came off uh, in 2021, uh, which meant they were fully depreciated. So we had no further amounts to depreciate for some of the assets. Uh, but it, then it grew to $300,000, and that's because we've made a significant uh, addition in the 2020 project, which increases your annual depreciation expense or amortization. So that resulted in a fairly significant deficit after amortization. So we recognize that and we would like to uh, remove that negative from our operation in the future. But the reality is until we have more students from the international markets that we're missing, we are hard pressed with our current level of enrollment to cover that lot, that amount of uh, expense, including amortization. So we, that's why we are praying for uh, enrollment to return to its previous levels identified uh, the percentages of administration compared to total revenue and we hover usually around 14 to 15 percent so that's a, a good uh, marker to keep identified so just generally speaking the expenses Expense areas in a chart format, much, much of the expense of the school goes to running the program, which is where the salaries are. Um, much of the expense, about 16% goes to facilities, which includes uh, utility expense, your repairs and maintenance, uh, fuel for vehicle vehicles, fixing vehicles. It's not the cost of the buildings, but it's our upkeep of the buildings and uh, the payments to our property managers, um, facility managers. The administration represents 15% and development and admissions represent 13%, which is actually quite impressive. So 13% of the organization generates the rest of the revenue for the organization. Now, I know you, if you take a teacher out, you're going to not have a class and you're not going to have students. So I recognize that. But uh, that, that's a, a fairly impressive uh, 
metric, I think, that 13% is for development and admission, admissions. So just looking at the assets of the organization at a high level, the assets include your cash in the bank, your receivables, and then all your fixed assets. So the general fund for the school is a million dollars. Our physical assets for the school and the capital asset fund is four million. Student aid has investments at today's value, excuse me, June 30th value of 375,000. And the endowment fund has 224,000. And you can see those amounts were higher as of June 30th, 2021. So that's because of the market value adjustment that we, we uh, experienced. Last item to identify is our long-term debt, which has increased significantly over last year as we've borrowed funds uh, to pay for the 2020 project beyond what we've been able to fundraise. So uh, the debt of the school now is 1.5 million. That also include, included debt for refreshing the computers for the students every three years. We are refreshing laptops for our students. So that we have a $300,000 debt, which we will cover over three years. We had to replace the cafeteria roof which has not been replaced. It's one of the final roofs on our campus that hasn't been replaced. Uh, and the leaking in the cafeteria said we are gonna do it now. So we did that this year. And we had the same experience with our dishwasher. Uh, we've had a dishwasher, industrial dishwasher in our kitchen for a long time and it, it, it gave up the ghost this year. So we had to replace that and that was a significant investment also. So we did borrow funds for those two items and uh, the amount we owe GLBC for McPhee is also in long-term debt. Um, I'm trying to think, any other items? I think that covers it. Okay. Should I entertain questions about the financials before we vote? Are there any questions on the financial statements that you'd like to ask at this time? And we'll wait for uh, questions to also come in at Brad's level. Okay, so we're gonna look to uh, approve the financial report. So, there is, there is a full financial report uh, available for Great Lakes. This is, this is the Bible College, but there's one just like it uh, for the Christian College. Um, I've reduced 10 pages of financial reading uh, into that one page statement that we are looking at now but it's basically the same thing. The numbers come from this financial report. If you would like to see the uh, full financial report, I ask that you just uh, email us at Great Lakes and we will make it available to you. So the thing we normally do at this point is we make a motion that Great Lakes Christian College, the 2021-2022 financial report be approved as presented. And I need a first for it. Doug Tallman, seconded by, uh-oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, now we got lots of people, okay. I'll go with Jeremy. And now we, we vote, correct? Okay, so if you wouldn't mind a show of hands if you support the acceptance of it. Thank you. Okay, the online people can vote to approve uh, the financial report at this time. All kinds of Don Whitfield jokes come to mind, but <laughs> maybe I won't. 
Okay, thank you. Brad says that the, he's got enough uh, positive votes. Okay, all positive. Okay, so we'll we'll, ca we'll capture that as carried. The second motion is that similar to the Bible College, Marsers South Cot Devoli Professional Corporation, chartered professional accountants, be appointed as the professional accountants for GLCC for the year twenty two twenty three. Linda's first, firsted, second, Murray Hibbard, and let me say I really uh, uh, appreciated the, uh, the accountants this year that's transitioning from uh, Dwight DeVoli to a, uh, a different individual who's bought the practice and he was great to work with so I'm glad that we've got that continuity of all the years that we've been with South Scott DeVoli that the late's still available, but uh, the, the new partner involved, I've really enjoyed working with him too. Did we vote on this? D did we first and second? Yeah, okay, so let's vote on it. Okay, we'll give a minute to the online people. No one voted no. Okay, just as we're waiting for that to end, okay, Brad says it's all positive. I want to thank you for uh, your patience as we work through the financial information and Don will take us to more exciting uh, information now. Not to raise the bar too high. <coughs> I'll just wait another moment for our people online. Well, thank you. It's nice to have people in the room with us. So two years ago, uh, those of us that did it entirely online were in a little room upstairs. We had about six or seven square feet and the air conditioning broke and it was a stifling oven. And then last year we were in the spiritual life room on the other side of the windows of this current room. Um, it, it just, it's, it's surreal. I mean, you can see that people can chat, but you don't actually know whether they're interacting or not. So thank you to everyone who's joining us online. Thank you for those of you who, uh, who came out today. So I just want to give uh, some updates of things that are happening both at the high school and at our preschool. And it's always easy, uh, I, uh, you, you know, Barb Smith is the one who keeps me, uh, she's always like, preschool, you gotta talk about the preschool, because that of course is her, um, her heart, but, and I will share some things about the preschool today. We fondly call the preschool the little school across the parking lot, and they call us the big school across the parking lot. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, first, I, I do want to, and this was mailed out to our corporation members, but to remind you that uh, we've actually had very little uh, change on our board this year. Last year at this time, Melba Bello was uh, on our board, and she actually stepped down last fall. And uh, Greg Tui, who uh, just stepped down because he had served three consecutive terms, and otherwise uh, there are no new board members. So... We do want to highlight that for the high school, we need 12 people to fill all our seats. So we have 10 board members. And particularly from among our corporation, we do solicit your help. We'd love to fill those seats. Obviously, there won't be an election this year. But if you or you know someone in your church community who could serve well in this capacity, and they can be from anywhere, because now with our new technology, uh, we have board members from across Canada. This is also true of Great Lakes Bible College. So Great Lakes Bible College actually has 15 seats and you have 13 filled? Yeah, so both of our boards would love to see two people filling those seats uh, and we just encourage you uh, to consider it yourself or if you know someone to send their names our way so that we can, uh, we can shoulder tap them. And we, we really want 
a variety of perspectives uh, on our boards to help us as we make decisions about our schools. So as promised, Great Lakes Christian Preschool, uh, now Great Lakes Christian Preschool has a maximum capacity of, uh, of 50 students and, um, and they're full. Actually, they have a waiting list. And, and those restrictions are because of their space and what they're licensed to be able to accommodate. So this is a wonderful thing. As Jim also mentioned, there's this very fancy word, the Can Canada-wide learning and child care system, which is that federally implemented, subsidized, uh, um, young, if you have your, your children in daycare or preschool, uh, or some JK and SK programs. And so we are participating in that, you have the opportunity to opt out of that without penalty at this, at this stage. And, and so we recognized that for many families, it's pretty hard to compete. Actually in Ontario, it's gonna be $12 a day, although the federal government's aiming for 10. And, and that's hard to compete with. And so we are, are participating and navigating our way uh, uh, through those waters, but it looks positive at the present time. Many of you will know that uh, Heather Moyer now has been with us uh, more than 10 years as the director uh, of our preschool, and in part also because of our involvement in the CWEC program, we have had to actually uh, hire more people. So, and, and some of the changes in legislation means that it used to be you could have one adult who would go with a, a, a child, for example, to uh, the washroom for a rest break and you could leave one. But now, if the numbers are too high, you can't do that. And so we've had to fill in gaps whereby we always have two adults with a group over a certain number. We always have one who goes with a student that has a need. We have some administrative. So uh, even though it's a small program, they employ 10 people. Oh, sorry, they have eight employees and then um, they of course have, uh, have Heather driving that. So it, it's, uh, and, and with 50 students, honestly, it's a, it's a pretty demanding uh, project. So it's, it's easy to forget how many people are working over there at McPhee Hall. And so it's always good to remind you of that. So this year, actually, we were really happy. We missed one year. So in all the years we've taken our full uh, picture of all of our students, we missed 2019, no, uh, 2020, 2021. So we were able to get our 2021, 2022. This is actually in June before all the students left uh, so that we could get that. But one of the things, the first question we always get is what, what's your enrollment like? And you've heard us talk a little bit about pre uh, and post pandemic numbers. So 19, 2019, 2020, we already actually had a, a decline and that was before the pandemic happened. Uh, and that was in part because we were already losing some of our connections um, in Asia. So one of the things that has happened is more and more Asian parents want to keep their kids closer to home. So they're sending more students to Australia and they're sending more, uh, interestingly, because this is, you, you might think it's farther away, but you got to go the other way across the continent to England. And, and so Canada, for some of our Asian markets, is becoming less desirable, cer and certainly the United States, North America in general. So our blessing, as Jim has said, is that we've had a sharp increase in our um, Nigerian market in particular, but we also have a couple students from Ivory Coast and new opportunities in Africa. Um, we do see growth again in Asia, but we'll never have as many Asian students every, as we've had historically. Um, we just don't see the political realities, the health realities. Um, and one thing that, that Jim didn't mention in his presentation is the visa process has become much more difficult. So uh, visas are more difficult to get and they're taking much longer to process. So where before a student could apply for a visa and have it within 30 days, it's taking up to four months now, and that's discouraging applicants. So then uh, we do see though, and this is, I believe, uh, a rich blessing. During the pandemic years, you know, we, we were trying to be conservative in our forecast, and, and, and it is by God's grace, and I do think it is also a testament to our staff and our admissions department that we didn't drop below 100 students. Um, it's, it's like this short of miraculous. And so that's been a rich, blessing. So the mix has been more adversely affected than the overall number and we actually have gone up. So right now when we say we have 107 students, we actually have 112 paid students, but five of those students are waiting for visa approvals. Um, and, and we don't know 
whether they'll all get here or not. Uh, because if they get here too late in the semester, they can't earn their credits. So, so we're, we're sharing 107. And if, uh, you know, Jim was saying, if there's prayer that you can pray, here's another one I'll give you. And that is that the students who are trying to get here, get here. Um, and, and don't, and many of them are seniors. So this adversely affects their senior year in, in high school. We employ, including the preschool, over 40 people. Um, most of those are, are full-time. And it's, it's uh, you know, as a small school, it's quite a complicated school in terms of being a boarding school, in terms of having preschool program, in terms of various departments. One of the fun conversations I have every summer is, oh, you must enjoy your summers off. Uh, some of us don't get summers off, but uh, the teachers, the residential food staff do, of course, because there are no students here to serve at that time. But there's about a, a dozen of us that work around 12 months. Um, you know, we take vacations like most people do, but we don't get the summer off. Um, and it's hard to realize sometimes how many people it takes to run a program that, that is relatively modest. I do want to highlight that we had four uh, staff leave us at the uh, end of last year. So Logan Ellis was teaching math. And one of the things that Jim alluded to was he did leave us in June, and we have been unable to secure a successor for him. And that's placed a fairly significant burden on our teaching staff because in addition to that, some of you may know Dwayne May. He was a faculty member for 12 years, and he has actually transitioned into a new role. He is our facilities manager. So we actually lost two teachers. Um, and now, we were able, because of the way that the classes were going, we knew and anticipated uh, Dwayne stepping out of the classroom, and we didn't need to replace him. Um, but what it means is placing extra burden on our principal and vice principal, who are teaching more classes than we want them to be teaching. We actually have uh, um, uh, a learning resource teacher, Heather Moore, and she is teaching, and we really want to get her down to teaching one class and supporting our students with uh, educational needs, and there's about 17 that we have in our program this year, and she's not able to serve them as well uh, as she could because she it has to teach extra classes. So another prayer is we continue to look for a math teacher to uh, succeed, uh, Logan, and we're hoping we can get one for second semester. That would make a huge difference, uh, certainly by next year, and so that's one. Uh, Phil was our residential male supervisor for uh, many years, and Heather worked in the kitchen, and so they have uh, transitioned away from the school. We have been able to cover internally what uh, Phil was doing in the dorm. And uh, in just a moment, we'll see uh, Linda McDonald is a new employee, and we hired her in food services. So Nicole, I got cut off here. Uh, Nicole and Heather worked in the kitchen as cooks. And so Linda McDonald has been hired full time. Doesn't quite cover all the cooking shifts that Heather and Nicole were doing. Uh, but but uh, we're very happy to have Linda Linda here. Jane Lunchhoff, who is the manager of food services, she is delighted that Linda is here and that she doesn't. Jane has to cover all the holes that were left by uh, by Heather and Nicole. One other thing I'd ask you to pray for: uh, we on the good news side, we now have a bus, uh, one of our 21 passenger buses, that goes to St. Catharines and Thorold every morning to bring students to Great Lakes and then return them home at the end of the day. So that's a wonderful thing. And they, I think they have 17 students that, that, that take advantage of that bus. We also have a van shuttle that drives to Hamilton, Burlington every morning and every evening, and it's transporting seven students. So that's a wonderful thing to have. Here's our challenge. Last year, we were able to cover the driving of that bus and that shuttle internally, but because of all of our um, staffing changes, we actually don't have the ability to do that now. Right now, we're piecemeal driving those routes for a temporary period of time, and we actually have to have a difficult meeting this coming week to consider whether we need to suspend one or both of those routes for a short period of time because we have been looking for someone or a few someones to drive either our bus or our van on a regular basis, and we've been unsuccessful up to this point to find anybody. And we're not the only school having this problem. If you look at any of the media, uh, public schools are having this problem, major bus lines are having this problem, and we're a small school. So we're um, really struggling to find someone to drive our bus and keep that van going, which of course may affect whether some of those students can be with us. So if you know anyone who can live in this area that might drive a, a van or is willing to get their bus license, which will help facilitate, 
uh, please let us know because we desperately need a bus driver and a shuttle bus driver. So many of you have been involved with the school, especially on our corporation. Your stakeholders have been involved in school, and this is how it's looked for many, many years. Those of you who have visited the school in the last year know it doesn't look like that anymore. And the reason I wanted to show this, this slide is because even though it was Vision 2020 and we had a grand reveal in October 2021, the actual work finished about four weeks ago. <laughs> So we are so happy, and actually in my, in my annual report, I said over the summer of 2021, that's actually wrong. The work finished in August 2022, but it's done. Hallelujah. So there are a few things that we uh, are finishing. So for example, we have uh, a couple of class projects. We have some gazebos to go up on a patio uh, outside this space that we're meeting in today. Uh, we have a few things, uh, additional projects. We're having a mural painted on the outside wall, but the actual work of that capital project is finished. And so I just want to say thank you to all the people and many of you as stakeholders and corporation members contributed toward uh, Vision 2020 or we also had a follow up the clean air campaign. And so uh, earlier Jim was pointing above his head, some of you online can't see this, but all of our classrooms now have their own individualized heating, cooling, air filtration, air circulation systems. And, and that will substantially improve um, the comfort level of the environment, but more importantly, the air quality of our environment and the consistency of being able to heat and cool. And so in the last couple of years, as we showed, uh, we raised uh, almost, and I'm going to get to that in just a moment, $600,000 to go toward these two projects. And, and that did not impact our general giving, which is, I can't even underline how important that is. Often when capital projects are put before people, they make a choice. They say, oh, well, I've been giving a general donation, and so maybe I'll just shift it over here. And that didn't happen, and that's a rich blessing, and I want to thank you for that. So on that note, uh, we raised $500,000 for Vision 2020, and our goal in 2021-2022 by June 30th was to raise an additional $100,000 to offset the cost of all of these uh, HVAC units. So we were able to secure 90,500. So we are actually still um, $9,500 short of our goal. And so there are some people that are extending their commitment. Thank you for that. Uh, but as you consider ways in which you might support the school financially this year, we'd really love to uh, close that and say that that's been fully raised. Uh, so that's something you can be praying about. What we're really excited about this year and we're gonna celebrate is the fact that it is our 70th anniversary. So actually, our 70th year of operation concluded in June 30, and in October, we are going to have an incredible homecoming alumni weekend that's going to focus on celebrating 70 years of God's grace and service uh, to the kingdom. And so you, I hope you're going to begin to see, and if you're not, I'm going to give you some directions about where you can get information about how you can participate in some of these events. But you will see uh, social media, some advertising. If you go to our website on our homepage and you scroll down to upcoming events, you'll see a, a link that will lead you to a web page that is dedicated just to our homecoming weekend on uh, October 21, 22, and 23. So on that note, that is the date of homecoming. So if you have been, if you follow the, the AGM for the last couple of years, you've seen this slide now. This will be the third time. So, so we really would like to honor John Brocklebank. We tried to honor him in 2020 in celebration of his class's 50th anniversary. Of course, pandemic said no. So then we tried in 2021 and then the pandemic said no. So here we are in 2022. I have verified that John and his wife Vicky will be here. Uh, many of you may not know John because after high school he went to the US where he was educated although he was raised here and had family here um, and, and he stayed there. He was uh, vice president of uh, SAS for, for many, many years. He's currently the dean of the College of Computing and Technology at Lipscomb University in Nashville, where he and his wife relocated. That's where their son Jay is. Uh, but he was a GLCC board director from 1997 to 2006, so he served three full terms before he had to step down. 
And um, perhaps most significantly for both GLBC and GLCC, it was John Brocklebank who facilitated the relationship with the Brooks Avenue Church of Christ in the US that allows us to receive donations from American donors. Um, so we're very, very grateful for all the ways in which John has, uh, has blessed our school. So uh, if you don't remember this website, you can visit this website. It'll give you all the details. This year, it's a full weekend program. For many years, we just had a dinner on the Saturday night. We're going to have a huge banquet uh, on Saturday night. There's uh, instructions on how to register for that. This year, you will want to re pre-register. We already have people registering, which is quite unusual in our community. People tend to wait, but it's generating, I think, a lot of positive energy because people want to connect again. It's been three years. We've got lots of classes that missed their reunions. Um, on Saturday, we're going to have uh, family opportunities. We're going to have a pancake breakfast that's been sponsored by our parent council. On Friday evening, we're going to have an opportunity for alumni to play last year's championship boys basketball team and last year's uh, girls championship volleyball team. So there's lots of things uh, happening on that weekend. I hope that you'll consider being a part of at least one of them. I just realized I could hit mute on my computer and it stopped making those noises. Okay, so I, the reason I wanted to show you a picture of the chorus, for me, one of the saddest things in the last two years has been our inability to have extracurricular activities and athletics. That happened for one full year. Even last year, it did happen with restrictions. Uh, it was two days before Josh Hunter and myself were going to travel with the chorus in 2020 to, uh, it was going to be Meaford and North Bay and Bramalee, and literally on a Friday, I had to call and cancel um, because everything shut down. And so the next year, chorus couldn't even sing together. Um, and then last year, this was a small group. We sang at Bramley and Tin Turn in the spring. The first two churches they've had an opportunity to sing at in two and a half years. Um, we're, we're, we're so excited to be able to visit churches again. This is something Em and I talked about too, because I mean, even for us in our roles with our respective schools, to be able to connect with people face to face, to have real conversations, obviously that's gonna be an emphasis and we're very excited to be able to have the chorus also to encourage and to minister by visiting congregations again. You might notice a similarity in the robes. This is our graduating class of uh, 2022. What's interesting about the dynamic of Great Lakes in the last 10 years is that it is fairly typical for our senior class to be almost 50% of our student body. Um, that's terrifying. <laughs> Every year half our school graduates and we need to replace them, but it's also amazing because a lot of our international students, particularly our Nigerian students, only come for one year. And the reason they do that is to graduate from an Ontario school to get into an Ontario university. Uh, and so that continues to be the case. And so our, our classes are often larger, uh, at, we're top heavy. So we typically have like 15 students in grade nine and we'll have 50 in grade 12. So uh, there you go. And also, you know, sometimes they're not so serious. So that's at uh, Tintern. Um, I, I just wanted to conclude my presentation by highlighting what Bob had read at the beginning of our AGM. Every year our student council selects a scripture theme to kind of focus us as a school community over the course of the year. We also have an alumnus named Claire Cole and every year she paints on canvas uh, an original painting that is our scripture theme. This is hanging in the foyer of, this, of Ellis Hall. I wanted to share it with you. And the focus of that passage that Bob read is John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. Uh, I have overcome the world. And uh, I think for our, our students who have, well, all of us have really struggled through the last couple of years and we're not free yet, um, but I love in our students their resilience, their hopefulness, and particularly their willingness to look to God to give them the strength that they need to overcome the challenges in front of them. Uh, I do encourage you, if you have any um, questions at any time, to reach out to us. The development at glchs.ca uh, email goes to me, 
and to Brad Cook, who helps me uh, with, our, with our development. If you visit our website, you can find the link to our alumni page. You can uh, see what's going on at the school. And I just want to encourage you to take advantage of the websites uh, uh, for both of our schools. So thank you again. I guess before I, we, we wrap things up here today, uh, we want to give an opportunity if there are any questions by either the people in the room or online regarding um, the high school and preschool programs. Yes. Now, and, and I do not want, first of all, the question was about school security and safety for the people online. Uh, and I don't want to be glib about this. I mean, we are blessed in being in a small Canadian community. This is not, I mean, it does, it does happen in Canada. I don't want to give that illusion. Uh, having said that, a few years ago, we already implemented uh, a FOB system. So all of our buildings are secure, and unless you have a secure FOB, you can't get in. So, and actually, as part of this renovation, we have actually moved our academic office right to the front of the building. So, uh, there are two offices upstairs in the academic office that can see everyone who comes up our front walkway now long before they get to our front doors. And then the front doors are secured and the academic um, secretary actually has the ability to either lock or open that door. Um, but unless you have a fob that gives you access, you can't get in the building. The, so, so those have been a couple of the measures that we have implemented. In addition to that, every year we do, just like we have fire drills, we have what would commonly be known, known as lockdowns. We call them hold and secure. So we do have protocols and policies in place in the event of an emergency outside or inside our building. Good question. Yeah. Okay, so the, the question for those online is, by participating in the federal program uh, with the preschool, is there any opportunity to expand in terms of our, our numbers? Is that? So unfortunately, what's limiting our numbers is our space. It has nothing to do with that. Uh, so right now, we have filled uh, the space that we have available. So there, there are ratios in terms of how much floor space. And actually, you may not know this. There are also ratios for how much window space you have to have. We actually had to expand one of our windows because there wasn't enough window space uh, to let in natural light. So um, unfortunately, it's highly unlikely that we can expand our program unless we hire new people. We do have one additional portable space at the back of McPhee Hall uh, that is currently being rented and used by Kinder Music with Miss Corey, which is a complimentary program that some of our preschool students do. Um, if we had the uh, ability, that is a space we could move into, but that, that's really the limitation is space. Yeah. Very good. Thank you again for being here. Thank you so much for your support, your interest in the operation of our schools. Uh, may God richly bless you. Hi, my name is Lawrence Whitfield, and on behalf of the uh, High School Board of Directors, we thank everyone, uh, both online and, and uh, who are present here, for per giving up of your time uh, uh, today to come and go through this material with us. Our chairman, Dr. Noah Walker, is uh, taking a bit of a sabbatical, so he included his responsibilities of, at the school. And our vice chairman is uh, Jonathan Straker, and uh, he's written a nice article in the uh, report. I hope you'll take time to read that. Neither of them could be there, so I'm just uh, speaking on behalf of our board to thank you so much for your time and to thank our administration for, um, for again, providing uh, a, an excellent guidance for our school. So at this time, let us uh, close our meeting and be dismissed, and I'll lead us in a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we do thank you so much for our schools. We thank you that we've been able to be in operation all of these decades. 
and we give you praise and honor for that. We pray that we'll be good stewards of the opportunities before us. We thank you for all of the people who make Great Lakes possible, and uh, especially those people who are willing to participate in our corporation membership and, um, and, and pay attention to our governance and our finances and such matters. We pray that you'll bless us all and, and help us to serve you better, for we pray in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>